Welcome class, on the board here we have today a Velocity Banking case study using a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for $15,000 at 8.7%. Four major numbers on the board, we've got income starting as, as low as $4,780 per month, as high as $6,400 a month, so their income does range. Their goal is to make more than $4,780 each and every month. So in my example here, when I run through the numbers, I'm going to show a bunch of different income levels each and every month, just to give you an idea of what this could look like in their personal financial situation to accelerate their debt. Their goal is to remove their bad debts. They want to get rid of these high interest rates. They want to, you know, properly implement velocity banking and then position them to you know either build a business invest create financial independence and financial freedom our timeline is within five to seven years or less not just getting out of debt but creating financial freedom and independence within five to seven years so income expenses were at 4640 which leaves us with a cash flow of only $140 if they only make 4780 spend 4640 cash flow is 140 could be as high as $1760 when they bring in $6400 for the month total debt is 36509 58. Some key details to be aware of regarding the debts. Okay, we've got some credit card debts, we have loan debt, car debt, and then we also have pre existing debt on the line of credit itself. So the PLOC is $15,000 credit limit. The balance owed is right here, 7,968. That's where we're starting out. The payment's 80 bucks, right? 8.7%. So you'll see that as we go through the number starting at that amount. Prior to this person becoming a coaching client of mine, getting involved in my financial freedom program, when they enrolled prior to, they were using this credit card right here to run bills. Now, typically I am in favor of running bills through a credit card to earn cash back rewards. Got no issue with that. The problem becomes when you're trying to run your bills through a credit card with a pre-existing balance owed. So in this situation, they have an existing balance owed on the credit card they're using the smart thing about it is they're using a credit card with the least amount of interest, 14.7%. But the issue is they're creating unnecessary debt and they're creating unnecessary interest costs. They would be better off using a credit card in their disposal with no balance that offers cashback rewards rather than a pre-existing credit card. So if you find yourself in this situation, you've been watching my videos or other people's videos on Velocity Banking, and you've got a P-Lock or maybe you got a HELOC, maybe you don't have those debt tools, but you have a credit card trying to do Velocity Banking, it can work if your focus is on the card itself. Okay, so let me be clear here. If this person did not have this P lock right here, this personal line of credit, if they did not have that, then they would be in the right. They would be correct. I would have them send their monthly payment of $150 a month to this balance, their cash flow 140 to 1760 to the credit card, as well as any bills from that 4640 that can be used on this card that would make sense what doesn't make sense is if you're now you've got two debt tools person has a pre-existing balance over here and they have a pre-existing balance over here and they're spreading their income they're sending some bills here and they're sending some bills here what ends up happening is you're getting hit on both ends at these interest rates instead of maximizing your efforts moving all income to one location, then deploying the money into the different directions that we need to go. So that was their issue. They're running bills through this credit card with a pre-existing balance. They're getting hit with interest on it. The bills that they're running on it, they're not paying it off in full. So the debt is rising because of the compounded interest on the credit card. Plus, they're trying to allocate some of their income and cash flow to the P-Lock. That's a no-no. So to course correct this, the first step, you're going to stop 
using the credit card to run your bills. I'm going to wean you off of that. When you find yourself in this situation, making a mistake in terms of maximizing your income and cash flow efforts to eliminate debt, then they're going to move all income, all cash flow to the P lock personal line of credits at a lower rate. And it's a better function. It's a better debt tool where we can dump all our income in. They can't dump all their income into the credit card, but they can with the P lock right here. So that's the second step move all income into the line of credit. So as I'm recording this video around September of 2022, I'm illustrating starting in October of 2022 and illustrating the balance starting at 7,968 for the month of October, money goes in 4,780, let's say income from October expenses. Notice how the number is different from 4,650. What occurred? The moment you start driving all income back to the line, you no longer have a payment of $80 that disappears, right? It doesn't register because you're sending all your income in. Basically, you're canceling this interest from accruing, which brings the borrowing costs from 8.7 down to less than 4%, less than 3%. Once we implement credit card use again, then we can count those cash back rewards because we would be paying the credit card off in full from the P lock. That's the difference when you're trying to run bills on your credit card and use the P lock, right? And then you're splitting your dollars. No, no, no. You got to send all the money to the P lock first. Then you withdraw to pay the credit card in full. But the only way you can pay the credit card in full is if it was at a zero balance to begin with. So the only thing you added on the card were bills, not pre-existing debt that needed to get eliminated first before we use the card. So that is key. That's very, very key. So notice how income goes in, expenses come out. Why? Because this $80 is no longer coming out of the line. So therefore it's now cash flow, which leaves us with a balance around 7,748. Then is we're going to, instead of hitting this car where they're running bills, trying to pay it back. No, we're going to incorporate some debt snowball principles, attacking smallest debt, work our way up. We're going to adopt that here. It makes sense. If I were to move this 1,297, 60 bucks is the monthly payment. 23.99 can get shifted to 8.7. 8.7 can become less than four. Now, the really cool part about this credit card is this 1,297 gives them roughly $30 in cash back rewards. Not bad at all. So what's going to happen here when they became a client, they used this credit card to purchase my program. So they're paying 1297 and they're going to do that for three months. That was their investment to create financial freedom and independence in their life, become debt free, become debt leverage, increase credit, become a master over their finances. All of that is encompassed in my program. So they're using a credit card to pay for it. They're getting $30 back in cash back rewards to ensure that they don't pay this interest. We're simply going to shift that to the P lock. We have space to do so. So this credit card all to the side, no longer running bills through that. Their one expense, which is temporary for just three months, 1297 is now going on the credit card first when it's due pays it off in full from the P lock at the end of October brings the balance up to $9,000. $45. Okay, cool. Then, then this is a estimate. When you factor in interest dollars, notice how I, I showed uh, the 7,968 times 8.7%, you get $693.21. It's the most amount of interest I can possibly pay in a 12 month period when the balance is right there. And all I paid was interest. That's not what's happening here. We're going to drastically cut that rate in half, bringing my net cost below 4% as we go through this whole entire scenario here. Income went in, expenses came out, left the balance somewhere around here, then added 1297. They got cash back rewards sitting in the credit card itself. So they could apply 30 bucks and then it would minus from 1297. So their actual output would be less. I'm not even accounting for the $30 in cash back rewards. That's going to help me in terms of my borrowing costs, factoring it into the numbers here. So these are estimates, right? Just to be fully transparent. End of October, balance somewhere around here. Okay. Next month, I showed income the same, right? Lowest number, 4,780. Look at the expense number now. 
or 1,500. Why is that? Well, I'm no longer paying 60 to that card. That 60 is 60 less dollars that comes out of the what? The P-lock. It stays in the P-lock. It's in there, right? So I recover that. So now I'm showing $4,500 actually coming out. Balance ends up 8,765 plus 1,297 minus $30 cash back rewards, which I'm not even illustrating in the numbers. I'm just letting you know that's what's occurring here. So that's November. Boom, balance goes up. Notice how the balance is increasing, right? That's on purpose because we're reallocating, avoiding these higher rates, and we're simply servicing the debt properly. They made an investment. 1297, 1297, 1298. So three payments of 1297 to my program. So we have to account for that investment. The best way to effectively, you know, run that investment would be through the P-Lock. And we're paying really nothing in interest to service that investment. And then it's going to replenish. It's going to come back to us. So October, now November, balance is at 10,062. Then I show, okay, let's say their income goes up now. They bring home around somewhere in the middle between 4780 and 64. They bring home $5,500. Again, expenses are the same. No debt has been paid off just yet, but we're redirecting the cash flow and the income to the line of credit. So 45 comes out, balance is now at 9062. The final payment, December 1297, minus those cash back rewards, leaves us with a balance around 10,359, somewhere around this number. Now, let's say we do bring in 6,400 for the month. They work extra hard, they work more hours, boom, 64 in it, 45. Again, no debt has been paid yet, no chunking. Come January, balance is now down to 8,459. When we look at, okay, how much should I leverage in the line in comparison to the cash flow, right? I'm comfortable floating around the 10K, 11K, 12K uh, a number, really not going more than 13,000, leave a couple thousand of space. So two thirds of 15 grand is 9,900, right? So I'm okay with going a couple thousand more than that. So around January, we're around 8,459 and we're gonna pay off another debt. So I got a loan here, right? Now I'm showing the original loan amount, okay? This is part of my overestimation here there. So in practice, the client will beat these numbers on the board, right? So I'm just showing you how powerful it looks when just overestimating for error, how nice the numbers look. Can you imagine how much better it will look in actual practice, right? And that really adds a lot of momentum for my clients when they beat my numbers, right? That gets them excited. So in this case, I'm showing us paying off this loan. So we're gonna move 24%. It's gonna get moved over here to 8.7, 1,798, $30 a month for October, November, December. I'm not even factoring in what that did to the balance. So I'm just going to show it right here. 1798.97. Add to the balance. Boom. We're now at the top. 10,257.97 at the end of January 2023. So now one credit card is now gone. That was an investment. That was debt that they created on the card for cashback rewards, right? And maximizing how we flowed that investment in velocity banking that is now done clear we're now getting rid of the loan that they had there 30 bucks now comes back into my cash flows 30 less dollars coming out of the line so look i showed income for february going down 4780 expenses 4470 30 dollars less boom coming out balance ends around 9000 947.97. That's end of February. Okay. Stepping into March 2023. All right. We'll make a little more money. Six grand. Income goes in. Expenses out. Boom. 8,417.97. Plus, notice how every time it gets around eight, around that original number, I'm looking to chunk again. I'm not waiting to bring the line of credit to zero because of how low my cost of borrowing is in comparison to these other debts, these much higher rates, 
So again, I did the same thing, showed this next debt that we're gonna eliminate, this credit card, 23%, moves to 8.7, 8.7 becomes less than four. $60 is the monthly payment. Obviously 60 bucks, we're continuously making that payment October, November, December, January, February, March, not even factoring that in. So the actual chunk amount would be less by a few hundred bucks. So I'm just showing 3,564,025 five coming out, bringing the balance up to 11,982.22. So now cash flow goes up by 60 bucks and I recover 23.99% and I bring it all the way down to less than 4%. Not bad. Let's keep going. Income goes in, showed it again, real low, baseline, 4,780. The reality is this person, as I as I spoke with him, they're typically always making more than that number of 4,780. Plus, after they see this, they're gonna be excited to make as much money as they can each and every month, that, that, that high number that they bring in, because it's only gonna go much, that much faster, and it's gonna position them that much faster, which is which is amazing. So I'm just really lowballing it here. So income goes in, expenses boom. Now they're at four thousand four ten. End of April, we're at eleven thousand six twelve. Then I show income at fifty two hundred. Income goes in, expenses out. Boom. May, right? Income goes in, expenses come out. June. Uh oh. June. We're around that number again. Eighty eight hundred. Right. Nine k. What's next? What's the next thing we want to hit? Right. We're getting ready. So June, balance goes down. I show income, expenses, bam, 8,242 July. We're getting close. Reason why I haven't chunked yet is we look at the debts. What's left? The line of credit itself has that, you know, existing balance. This has been eliminated. We have a car debt here, 10 grand. The payment's 596, but it's at zero interest. So it would not make sense for me to do velocity banking on a zero interest debt for the sake of recovering the cash flow. No, I would revert back to Snowball if I want to get rid of that, or I could just service the debt until it's completely paid off and allocate my cash flow to another location to make more money. So in the meantime, we're just going to keep doing velocity banking until I've created enough space to get rid of this last credit card debt over here. It's costing me 150 a month, 14.7%. That could get moved to 8.7, 8.7 becomes less than four. So we're gonna keep doing velocity banking all through 2023. August, boom, income goes in, 55, expenses come out. September, income goes in, expenses. By this point, guys, they're paying pennies on the dollar in interest. We're talking 20 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month, and that gets zeroed out once they start implementing using the credit card again. Now, in this case, they got rid of this credit card here and this credit card right here. This credit card we know was giving us some really good cashback rewards. So after this card got eliminated around December, no longer using it, then I would feel comfortable saying, OK, run your bills through that card or that card. It's at a zero balance. You get the cashback rewards, balance goes up when it's due, pull from the line of credit, pay the credit card off. You're lowering your borrowing costs in the line of credit because more of your income stays in the line of credit for a longer period of time. When it comes out to pay the credit card in full, the credit card yielded cashback rewards, 2%. Your borrowing cost is four, four became two. So understand when we get over here around this time, they're going to be well acclimated into properly using a PLOC and a credit card together to bring that interest cost to near zero, right? Then you factor in what they rerouted, right? They rerouted 24%, 23.99, 23.99. They rerouted. That's also the same interest they were paying on that 60, on that 30, on that 60. So we're not paying no new interest in the line of credit. It's pre-existing interest we were going to pay anyways, we're now paying much less, hence going faster than if we were to just make extra payments of $140. You would still be trying to knock out the first card. All right, well, we're way ahead of you. So September, right? Income goes in, expenses come out. October, this is 2023. 
income goes in expenses go out notice how i keep fluctuating the income you know lowballing it by november the balance goes down to 3032 so november december 2023 is when you would chunk somewhere around 10k because you factor in all those payments of 150 all through the rest of 2022 all through 2023 that's 12 months roughly 15 months of making 150 dollars a month payment that's naturally bringing the balance down i totally overestimated net balance and showed that it would be somewhere around 10k would be the chunk brings the balance on the line pretty high somewhere around 13 this again is overestimating by then, by around this time, I would even have them go to the bank and get an increase to 20000 just to create a little more space. That would make sense. You've had the line of credit for over a year and a half. Go ahead, apply for a $5,000 increase. Nothing crazy. Give you 20. Cool. Wonderful. Then make your chunk. 10K. Boom. We recover the 150. You do velocity banking. That'll get eliminated within six to nine months you're now completely done. Only debt that remains is the car loan. And at that point, this person's options would be revert back to Snowball, stop using the line of credit, and Snowball this car payment, 596 plus whatever their cash flow is, 2000, 2500, 1700, whatever the cash flow is, they could be knocking. And notice, understand 596 times all these months, that balance is gonna be eliminated right? It's going to really knock that balance down quite a bit because no interest is being tacked on. So 596 times 12, October, November, December, 15 months, 8,940. So 10,260, 13 minus 8,940 balances 1320. So after they do velocity banking on the on the line of credit here so december so we we can estimate by june or sooner of 2024 that line of credit would have hit zero once it's completely paid off they can take one month's worth of cash flow matter of fact by the time the line of credit hits zero the car is paid off so 590, 596 comes into their cash flow before the line of credit's paid off. The line of credit is now going to get paid off faster because they got that 596. So that is beautiful. So now that's gone. Everything's gone. By mid first quarter of 2024, not bad at all. This person's now a master over their finances, their discipline. They're probably making more income by 2024. We'll have a strategy in place to create more income. We can invest in ourselves, figure out what this person's skills, gifts, and talents are to move forward, can increase that P lock. They can increase the credit limits on their credit cards, just gaining access to more capital. Their credit score will probably jump to 800, 750, maybe higher. In a very healthy position here, my friends. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this YouTube channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. I love writing out numbers, case studies, showing you guys the power of this concept, how fast we can go with, with lower incomes, higher incomes. If you're brand new, you're gonna wanna check out the playlist on velocity banking pregame work, positioning yourself properly before you jump in. Once you do that, you're gonna wanna go to check out all about the line of credit. Before you do velocity banking, you're gonna need a debt tool. Before you get the debt tool, you need to do the pregame work, position yourself to get approved for the debt tool. Well, what is a debt tool, right? You got HELOCs, PLOCs, credit cards, all in one, first lien, second lien, a lot of different tools, securities back line of credit, insurance back line of credit, bunch of different terminologies I share with that all in all about the line of credit. So you can fully understand the difference between simple versus amortized and how we offset our interest to near zero. In many cases, zero. In other cases, positive, where you literally are making a spread when you're borrowing debt. It literally doesn't cost you anything, especially when you're on the business side of things, when you can write off interest. It's it's incredible. So that's great. Then right before you implement Velocity Banking, right? You did the pregame work. You looked up all about the line of credit. You found the best debt tool for your personal financial situation. You want to check out the Velocity Banking scenarios, the Velocity Banking case studies, hundreds of them on my YouTube channel. But I put a bunch of them, the most in-depth videos. I put them all together in order, dating back as far as 2018 all the way up to 2022 and beyond. 
right? As I continue to, you know, make more videos on this YouTube channel. So you're going to want to check out that playlist, Velocity Banking Scenarios, Velocity Banking Case Studies. That's going to be very, very advantageous for you. You might just be on your way, never having to spend a dime. You might get it. It might click. The light bulbs might go off and you're on your way. Fantastic. For some, you may need a little more handholding. You need some coaching. You need some mentoring. You need some discipline. You need an accountability partner. That's where I can come in on the back end as your financial coach and consultant. Literally, mapping out the numbers every single video i do on numbers on youtube are real life scenarios real case studies real numbers real situations real problems that people are trying to solve that you can relate to that's all for today have a wonderful day god bless and we'll be talking soon